All right, well, this is our 2017 Lance 2295. We've owned this for about a year now and are probably gonna be selling it just to uh, get something a little bigger as our family is growing. And uh, yeah, figured I'd give you a final tour and walk through our likes and dislikes of this unit. So it's a rear bathroom, a shower back here, Skylight, it's decent size. I am six foot two, and with the skylight up there, I can fit no problem. Um, one thing we liked about the Lance was the quality of the cabinetry, very good. The previous owner actually did a few modifications, so you can see there used to be a coat rack, or it still goes all the way through, but they ended up putting in this for more storage space, and we like that. Um, you know, there is some drawers down here um, these command hooks are really nice for hanging your towels on works really great in an RV so the kitchen is really in the mid section and this is the single slide over the dinette Dinette makes into a bed. Cushions are really nice and thick, and there are drawers that pull out underneath each side of the um, dinette. What's kind of nice is that anything that moves, they put these locks on so that when you're driving, these drawers don't come undone. So they pull out pretty far, which is nice. Handy for getting things in and out. And then those screws just go back in. Um, we've been in this trailer when it's been about 20 degrees in the snow and in my opinion it stayed plenty warm. Um, it stayed warm mostly with the electric heater but of course the, the furnace, the electric furnace was kicking on. One thing that's nice about this storage pantry is that again it slides out the uh, little copper tab that holds that in. It has to come up a lot of times but yeah, back in there. So this slides out, makes getting your uh, coffee or chips or oils for cooking or whatever you keep in there nice and easy. And then that locks into place. Another storage bay down here. Keep some dog treats and towels. So you've got storage all down here. Again, good cabinetry. And then the other modification that the owners did before us is they put in this, it's like a little Ikea unit. And they put these on with the cubbies, which is really nice for storage. So it holds all your stuff in while you're driving, but it's just a easy Velcro to get it out. So really simple idea, makes uh, this very open space much more usable though, to have it organized. So keep our Keurig, our electric uh, walk in there. Um, it's a digital thermostat. This has worked well. Three burner stove, little oven. Never actually used the oven. Um, small, but you know, you could use it. Got your microwave up here. Ample counter space for this size of a trailer. It's about 23 feet long plus the hitch. So about 25 or six total. Now behind this uh, pegboard, you put your uh, camp stuff up there but this does lock in and there's a TV on the other side of it. What's kind of nice is this TV swivels. So if you want to turn it, you can watch it from the living room area or you could watch it from the bed. This I believe is a full size queen. It's very comfortable. Um, previous owners upgraded the gas struts underneath it so that it does actually hold the bed up. It's one of the weak points that a lot of times fail. We've never actually used these latches. Looks like it locks into place, but I don't really think this thing bumps around with the mattress on there. So we've never messed with that. Um, more command hooks. We like to put our jackets on those. You know, you got your cabinetry. This again was a coat hanger. They put in these little balsa wood um, cabinets there, which is nice. 
So, um, yeah, we really like this this trailer. The only reason we're getting rid of it is to get something larger. Like I said, we've got a big dog, small dog, a two-year-old who loves to run around, and also um, we are going to be having more kids. So this trailer has just, we've kind of outgrown it, and uh, we're on to yeah, something bigger and better. Now, one thing I love about this Lance is that it has onboard solar, came with solar. So if you look up here, it tells you that you've got a full battery and that you're producing. That's really nice. Uh, it honestly always keeps our batteries topped up. Um, and while you're driving down the road, you know, you can um, rest assured that your batteries are at least gonna be full when you get there if you are dry camping or something of that nature. One thing I like about the Lance is that it's a low chassis. This is actually, I made a mistake in my previous video, made by BAL. It's not made by Lance, but um, it's made by BAL. So you can see it's only two steps to get in. You're a little sticky. It's very low. I mean, this first step, you don't even really need to use it. One step in. So that is very nice. One thing I like in the uh, outdoor area is that there's a slide out behind this door. And, uh, so it makes getting your stuff in the middle really handy. This pull out even further. And so getting your tools is uh, really handy. It does only come out on this side. Whoops. Hit my uh, truck alarm. Okay. Regroup. So that is one thing we like. You got your two uh, propane tanks up there, two five gallons. You switch over, batteries are there. And then you got your spare tire underneath. Um, other than that, there is also an outdoor kitchen area with a propane grill, quick attach down here. So if we open up this bay. This uh, outdoor kitchen area actually slides out and you've got a two burner grill and a sink and a little bit of storage area up top. So that is really handy. Used it a few times. We like that. It's got some outdoor power and awning. What's nice about this awning is that it is wind sensing, so it will auto retract if it gets too windy, and that has happened a couple times. On this side, you'll see the slide, and uh, you know some of your other mechanicals. You do have some storage underneath here, um, which is under the dinette, and then again, you've got that storage area on this side, which is you know, where I keep some of my wheel chocks. So there's the other side of that pass or that uh, pull out drawer. So overall, I've been very impressed with the quality of this unit. You can see here that uh, is made in 2016, but it's 6,000 pounds gross vehicle weight rating. So, you know, and what is this? Uh, can't remember how much, let's see, capacity, 1,082. So this weighs just about 5,000 pounds. It's very, very, very much half ton towable. I did used to tow this with my Tundra. I ended up getting a bigger truck for my dump trailer. And just to, and of course I have this trailer as well. So the F-350 is really overkill for a trailer of this size. You could tow it with an Expedition or a Suburban properly equipped uh, or something of that nature, an Escalade perhaps. Um, something bigger would be better, but definitely you could do it. F-150 or 1500 Tundra, uh, no problem for this. The other nice thing is that the front, as you can see, is curved. And so from an airflow standpoint, aerodynamics, um, not too bad a mileage because this trailer sits fairly low. It's um, fairly aerodynamic as far as, you know, an RV is gonna go. So we'll put in the slide and end the tour here and I'll let you know what we end up getting for our next RV. So the things that we liked about this trailer include um, that it's well built and well assembled. Nothing during our ownership period broke or stopped working. None of the appliances failed. Um, 
I mean, none of the trim fell off. You know, a lot of the things that you see in RVs, just from shaking around and being bumped around on the road, nothing broke. So we're very happy with that. The insulation was also very good. As you saw, we camped in several nights of snow. We went through a lot of cold rain, sleet, hail in this camper, and we were always warm inside. Um, and on that note, having that electric fireplace was really nice because it cuts down on the amount of propane you use when you don't have to have your normal furnace on as much. That, that electric fireplace acts as a nice space heater and it's also nice for ambiance, but you could just leave that on and it keeps the camper generally warm unless it's like below freezing out, then you definitely need to run that furnace. And then it's, it kicks on and off because it doesn't need to stay on all that much. Um, I would say that compared to a lot of other trailers, the Lance sits a lot lower on its chassis. And so it's both easier to get in and out of, and then you don't have to worry about hitting tree limbs or like low bridges or anything of that nature. It's just over 10 feet tall at 122 inches. Um, the other nice thing is that it's only 6,000 pounds loaded. And so, like I said, you could tow it with a lot of different vehicles, or if you have a three quarter ton or one ton truck, you're not even gonna feel it behind there. Um, you know, even when it's full of water and everything else, 6,000 pounds is the fully loaded weight. It's about 4,500 pounds dry. Um, for a trailer of this size, we liked that it had 45 gallons of fresh water. And so, you know, we could fill up water and then stay in like a couple of Cracker Bills or Cracker Barrels or Walmarts, you know, if you're making miles, just get getting somewhere before you get to a campsite and you can still shower and not have to worry about running out of fresh water for a few nights. And then the last thing that I wanna mention is that we felt like the Lance had really nice quality windows, both from an insulation standpoint and a clarity standpoint. They were easy to crank open and get some airflow in there on warmer days. And um, I don't know, just the quality of the windows, in my opinion, on the Lances are better and a little bit different than a lot of your typical trailers. So those are some of the things that we really liked. Now on to some of the cons. I would say that for us, there was just kind of a lack of general floor space inside. With the wall where it was that has the TV and the fireplace, it really separates the, the dining room area, which is the main living space and the queen size bed. You know, so if somebody was wanting to converse with, you know, while you're cooking a meal, the only place is really to sit on the dinette there, which is okay, but there's no other couch or any other seating area. And that's part of just, you know, what you're gonna get in a trailer of this size. But that slide out's pretty small. It just is over that dinette. So you don't gain a whole lot of floor space from it. It definitely helps um, versus not having a slide. But with multiple dogs and a kid, um, we just found that we were kind of like on top of each other a little bit when you're walking around. Um, the one other thing that we didn't like was that the sink was a bit small. And I, I would say it was small because it was split. So there was a slightly larger section and then a slightly smaller section with a divider in between. And in my opinion, I would have rather just had one sink, even if it was the same overall size, because washing pots and pans or even just larger plates in there um, was kind of challenging to like angle it just right so that you could be, you know, not having the water flow onto the counter. We never really had any major issues with that. It's just kind of a minor annoyance, but I would prefer to have a single basin sink rather than the split sink. Aside from that, I mean, that's really kind of being nitpicky. This has been an excellent trailer. I think for a couple or a very, very small family, maybe if it's just three people with no dogs, um, this would definitely work. There's just not a whole lot of floor space. So what did we end up purchasing? We went with a 2008 Forest River Cardinal, which is a 34 foot long fifth wheel and it has two, um, two slides. So there's one slide above the king bed and one larger slide in the main living area. Um, we did this just because we have the bigger truck to tow with now with the F-350 diesel. And we also plan on living in this trailer for a few months um, because we have bought some land and we just closed this past weekend um, and we bought 12 and a half acres. So we're gonna be building a house on that property uh, come next year and plan on 
selling our current house and moving into that fifth wheel full time, at least for a couple of months while we finish building the house. I should say while our contractor finishes building it, I'm not handy enough to build a house by any stretch of the imagination. So that's another reason that we upgraded and went with a larger fifth wheel, um, just because we are gonna be spending some significant time in it, um, along with our normal camping and weekend trips here and there. So more, um, more to come on that new trailer. We're picking it up next Saturday. Um, they're just kind of finishing a few things that needed to be fixed on it. Uh, waiting on a few parts, but um, it was a one owner in very great shape. And so we are super excited to share some more adventures with you uh, using that RV and uh, also share some stuff about the, the house build as that progresses. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching and we hope to see you on the next video. Bye now.